Greetings, Earthlings. This is Earthu Defense Force Five. Earth Defense Force Five in the subtitle. Uh, it's it's a it's a good game. Well, mission one is just a cutscene, basically. Uh, so we're actually gonna start for mission three because that's the real that's where the real game starts. We're gonna play it on hard. Now, what's really cool about this game is that there are giant ants. Yeah, I think they started shooting a movie in the base while we were gone. Did he just say commencing initiation procedure? These guys could have taken some hints from the writers of Star Trek The Next Generation, you know what I'm saying, on their techno battle. <laughs> I, I think they went to the uh, father of the bride school of commence to start. I like to imagine that in the world of EDF, uh, normal ants do not exist. That's why they, they never refer to these guys as ants. Actually, the first introduction of normal ants into the EDF universe, but they've, they've gone in Ant-Man and the Wasp into communist ants, but they're, uh, but it's more realistic because then they want to wipe out humanity. How long do you think it's going to take before, before they, they bring Elijah Wood into the MCU and he shows up? And it's a less convincing uh, situation than him being the guy, coming in and saying, I'm the guy! And then they say, who are you? I'm the guy. The real guy. Yeah, I think that would be better than She-Hulk, actually, now that I think about it. Oh, the guy's right in your face, and you gotta get out of the place. Mm. These ants are spraying me with mace. Sick em, boys. Sick em, sick em. Shake and bake em. Dang, that reminds me of a dream I had a couple nights ago, uh, where I was going camping. Uh, but but it, it was uh, it was crazy because when I when I was at the the place where it's like oh hey you know we eat here you know the mess hall you know um we I got to the mess hall and the guys are like wait you have a phone you can't come in here and I said what no I, I've had a phone for like five years and, and I've been able to get into the mess hall you know I, I, I'm an adult here and they're like oh well guess what uh, turns out you're at space camp and uh, adults have to be over 85 uh, because they're like baby Yoda you know they're, they're like 50 years old that's like a baby to them so so then um, I say well uh, can I like can I just I don't know get some food outside and they said oh sorry you actually can't do that because outside is space please come in right now or you will die I think I woke up at that point but then I fell back asleep and uh, I when I woke up, I took my phone out of my pocket, and I set it down on the ground, and then I went back to sleep. And in my dream, I no longer had my, uh, I no longer had my phone, because that's, that's how dreams work. Ooh, spitball. I thought those were illegal. Yeah, so, uh, so I didn't have my phone at this point, right, in the dream. Um, and that's just like me in real life, I didn't have my phone. Uh, but he said, okay, well, uh, now you can get in the mess hall, because you don't have your phone. Uh, but but you got to do something about that beard, and so uh, and so he threw me out into the vacuum of space, uh, and I died in the dream. So I woke up again because that's uh, it's Inception. Th then it's morning time, and I got to go to work. So I go to work, and then when I get home from work, uh, I go into the shower and I and I shave off like my sideburns because they're way too long, and I trim up my beard and make it look nice, you know. And and then uh, then I fall back asleep after supper, uh, and the guy says, okay. Well, uh, at least now you don't have a beard, you don't have a phone, um, and I said, okay, now can you leave me alone? And he said, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, th there's a problem though, um, you haven't eaten in Dream World for a full day, uh, so you're starving. I said, oh no, uh, and he said, no, no, no problem, no problem, all we need is a time machine. Uh, and since this was space, they had, they had a time machine handy, uh, so, so I hop into the time machine, but the guy at airport security for the time machine, because like it's it's got to be super timey. He's like, wait a minute, is that tomorrow's newspaper? And I said, no, no, it's today's newspaper. And he said, not where we're going. You better get rid of that. So then my alarm goes off, but it's my early alarm. So I wake up and I take uh, today's newspaper out of my pocket and I set it on the floor, because you know obviously like that that fixes it in the dream. Uh, and then I go back into the dream, I fall back asleep uh, after snoozing my alarm for five more minutes uh, and I get into the time machine and that allows me to sleep an extra year. So I go back in time and I eat and I get the food, uh, but there's a problem. Uh, the food actually tastes really, really bad. It is like the worst food I've had in my life. Um, it's like if somebody took... 
like, okay, you know, like, um, what's it called? Uh, Velveeta cheese? Imagine that. But somebody, like, sucked all the water out of it, so now it's just, like, powder. Like, if you took, like, the, you know, the Velveeta cheese powder that, like, you, you mix in water and it becomes, like, cheese dip? Imagine just the powder, uh, but was, like, no water or anything. It's, it's just the powder. Like, it was, it was that bad, man. It was, it was, oh! So then I say, hey, can I speak to the chef? And they say, oh, okay, okay, uh, there's, there's a slight problem, though. And I say, yeah, what's, what's the problem now? Well, the chef is actually in the Glopagar system, and you're at space camp. That's, like, two miles away. And I say, oh, that's no problem. And they, they say, oh, uh, sorry, in our alien language, a mile is actually, like, ten billion of your miles, because it's space. And I say, okay, well, how do I get there? And they say, oh, you gotta go to the airport. And I say, the airport? Like, in space? And they say, no, 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 it's, it's actually just a one really big planet, you know? Uh, we're not that weird, you know? And so, uh, I go to the airport, and they don't have airport security, because in space, uh, they have no terrorism on airplanes, because they have time machines. Uh, but the time machines are what they have to worry about. And so I get into the airport, and I go up the, the boarding ramp, and the flight attendant says, Wait a second, Budzo! You aren't wearing a tie. I say, oh, come on, I didn't go to bed with a tie. What kind of wacko do you think I am? And they say, well, you're the type of wacko that's not getting on my airplane, if you know what I'm saying. And so I, I get back into the, the waking world, the five minutes in the year that I time traveled had passed so I could wake up again and still be on time for work. So, so I go to work. I have my full day at work, you know, just doing my job, you know. Um, and then, finally, I get back home, and I eat real-life supper, but I'm still hungry in my dream. So, uh, I go back to sleep, uh, and I wake up in my dream, uh, and I'm in the dream world again. But this time, I'm, I, I remember to go to bed wearing a tie. So, I'm wearing a tie, I get onto the airplane, and the waitress says, Oh, yes, that's a very beautiful die tie, my good sir, thank you. Uh, you may proceed onto the airplane. So then I'm on the plane, and I start flying, but uh, there's a slight problem. Pilot has forgotten his pilot's license, uh, so he can't fly. Uh, I say, uh, don't don't worry, don't worry. Um, I got my pilot's license, and I reach into my pocket. But since I don't have my pilot's license in my pocket, I can't I can't fly the plane. So they say, oh, well, looks like we're stuck here. So I say, don't worry, don't worry, my alarm goes off in five minutes, we can just wait here for a second. Uh, and then one second passes in the dream, and that's five minutes in real life. Uh, and I wake up, and I grab my pilot's license from the desk. So I, I grab my pilot's license off of my dresser, and I put it in my pocket, and I go back to sleep, and I'm sleeping. Uh, and this time, I, I have this really weird dream where, um, where I'm a construction worker who is working on this big building, and uh, suddenly George Bush calls me on the phone, and he says, Hey, I got a job for you. You want a job, budzo? <laughs> and then I say, Wait a minute, this is not George W. Bush, former president of the United States. What are you doing on the line, Mr. Manfredo? And he says, Hey, hey, hey I don't know what you're talking about. That was a really weird dream, so then I fall asleep in that dream, and I have the dream where I'm back on the airplane, and now I have my pilot's license, and I say, wow, that was weird. I fly the plane, I go to the Zabagul system, uh, which is on the same planet, because it's, it's a it's space camp. Um, I don't know why all the audio from, from the game just stopped. Oh, I guess I, guess I should uh, do the missions in order. Nah. <laughs> So anyway, I'm flying the plane, and then, uh, at the same time, I'm, like, flopping back and forth between the construction worker dream with, uh, Mr. George Manfredo and, uh, flying the plane in the construction side, and so we're both flying, I'm flying both planes, okay? Uh, the two planes are flying to the Zabagul system, and the, I get, I finally make it to the Zabagul system, and what do you know? Whoop! Okay, that's my hammer. Okay, so that's my jump pack. Uh, what's what's my oh shift is my dash. Okay, so I can finally make it to the Zabagul system after all this time, and I see the chef. I say, "Hey, chef!" And he says, "What's what's the issue, laddie?" And it's uh, it's it's Sanji from One Piece. Uh, he's 
he's, he's cooking it up, you know? But it, it's from the 4Kids dub. And I say, oh, dang! It's Sanji from the 4Kids dub of One Piece! And he says, aye, laddie! Because uh, he's a pirate, um, and he, he... He says, now, what do you think of me cooking? I say, uh, I don't know, man. It's like the worst food I ever had at space camp, you know? I've been going to space camp... Well, I, I've been going to Boy Scout camp for, like, 15 years. And I've never been to space camp before, but the food is like 10 billion times worse. And he goes, Yar, har, 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 of course it be, yar. They have to send it over 10 billion miles to, uh, to make it to your place. Uh, he was a human too, so he used the, the human mileage counter. These weapons really suck, huh? This is why I don't play Fencer. But I say, okay, Sanji, uh, tell you what. Uh, I have I have my time machine license here. I'm cleared for time machine use. Uh, can can I take the food back in time and like make it so I can eat my supper on time yesterday? And he says, Oh, uh, I never really thought of that. Uh, time travel uh, and food. Hmm, interesting. I I didn't even know you could time travel. He said, What? You're you're in space and you didn't know you can time travel? What kind of pirate are you? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess he's not a space pirate, but I, I didn't know that in my dream. I, I was I was more worried about why he didn't, why he was in space but didn't know the time machine. I had a lot going on at the time, like, not, look, looking back on it, I can see that maybe I should have, you know, given him a little more slack on the whole time machine thing, but like, it, it, it really bothered me at the time, you know, it, it was just, just, just a little bit annoying, right? So then I say, okay, there, there's one problem, though. Uh, is, is that a time machine over there? I, I just always thought that that was a really weird-looking uh, sailing ship. And I look over there, and it's it's a... At first glance, I think, wait, that's not a sailing ship. And I see, wait a minute, that is a time machine. Haha! -ha. But he says, oh, there, there's one problem, though. That, that, that actually belongs to my roommate. And I said, okay. Well, uh, can we ask your roommate to use it? And he says, yeah, but he's kind of a wacky guy. Um, he's kind of crazy, you know? He, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't get along nice. Um, and I say, okay, well, um, tell you what, uh, I'll, how about I go talk to your roommate? And he says, okay, okay. Uh, he gets home, well, he, he should wake up any minute now, and I'm like, wait a minute. This is like the middle of the afternoon. It's like getting in the evening, you know, and almost, you know, like 4, 4.30, 4 4.35 4 o'clock, you know, in, in dreamland. And then, uh, then he says, okay, well, uh, that's, that's, uh, he, 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 he's a college student, you know, and he's kind of a wacky guy. And I, oh yeah, I get that. I, that was, I, I've done that a couple times in college, you know, back in my day. And so I'm very understanding of his situation, but at the same time, I really want to eat yesterday. So, uh, so I... Ooh, the kitty is asleep on my lap now and my leg is falling asleep too. Hi, kitty. Uh, so anyway, I, I go upstairs and his roommate uh, is in the other room, uh, sleeping. So the door is shut and I, and I go, I, I knock on the door and I say, uh, hey, buddy, um, and then, uh... And then the door opens, and standing there is like this 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 guy in a in a dark suit with uh, with a red like with a red ascot, not a cravat, an ascot. And he says, "Good evening." And I say, "Oh, now I see. You're Dracula. That explains why you wake up at five o'clock. Because you, you, instead of saying good morning, you say good evening. Yeah, that makes sense." So then I say, "Hey, Dracula. Um, can I use your time machine for a minute?" He goes, ah, 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 of course, but there is one small thing you must do. And I say, okay, sure. He says, I need some blood to, for breakfast. Can you get me some? I say, whoa, um, sorry, I, I, I fell asleep without my blood. He says, oh, okay, well, um, uh, when you can get me blood, I will get you time machine. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, and I don't have any weapon that can, like, destroy these, actually. I'm gonna be here for a while. Uh, I might have to retreat. 
And in my dream, I also had to retreat, because uh, I had kind of hit a dead end with Dracula. Yeah, we're going to retreat. Uh, so, was, yeah, Dracula, Dracula he used blood, so I woke up, and I went over to my nightstand, and on my nightstand, uh, I had a, a, a box of blood-soaked rags. And I grabbed those, uh, and I put them in my pocket, and I went back to sleep, uh, making sure to hit snooze on my alarm. So I'm back asleep, and I have the blood-soaked rags in my pocket. Uh, and, I, and I go to Dracula, and he says, Ah, 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 I am Dracula. You bring blood? And I say, yeah, I brought blood. And I hand them to him, and he says, oh, oh, a very fine vintage. And he pours them into a wine glass, and then, like, starts stirring them around. And he says, all right, now, uh, you can use my time machine. Here are the keys. And he hands me the keys. Um... And then I, I go to the time machine, but then five minutes in real life has passed, so I wake up and get ready to go to work. And I get out of bed, and, and I, uh, you know, go to work. And I'm uh, eating breakfast, you know, drinking my coffee, you know, getting ready to go to work. I, I drive I drive all the way to work, uh, and I make it to work, and I do my work, and I get home from work. And uh, then I then I fall back to sleep, and I say, "All right, now I'm finally ready to take the time machine." But uh, there's a slight problem. When I went back to bed, I forgot to put the time machine keys in my pocket. So so there I am, uh, up the river without a creek, and uh, I've got no time machine keys. And I gotta I gotta wake back up, but it's it, I just fell asleep. It's gonna be like another at least seven hours before my alarm goes off, you know. And, uh, I say, well, what am I going to do? And then I remember, so I pull out my cell phone, because I did bring my cell phone to bed this time. And I take my cell phone, and I call up the other Martin, who's still flying the plane. Uh, now, he, he still has his cell phone, even though he's not supposed to when he's driving the plane. Uh, and, and he says, hey, what's up? And I say, hey, uh, do you have the time machine keys? Uh, he says, oh, yeah, yeah, hold on. Uh... I've got my alarm going off in about 10 seconds. Give me one sec. So uh, so he wakes up. And he wakes up from that dream. I wake up from that dream. But I'm still asleep in the Dracula dream. So I grab my time machine keys. Uh, I, I left them in my coat pocket. So I, I, I get up. I go to my closet. I find my coat. Boondock Saints coat. Yeah, kind of, you know, pea coat, you know. Good looking coat. And I grab my keys from that pocket. Then I go back to sleep in the construction worker dream, uh, and I'm back in the plane, and I fly the time machine keys to myself in the Dracula dream, and I say, hey, thanks for the keys, but if I run into myself in my dream, then I'm going to wake up. So what I do instead is I put my keys in my pocket as I land the plane, and then I fall asleep. And when I fall asleep, I become myself in the other dream, and so I wake up in the other dream, and I have the time machine keys in my pocket. So I get into the time machine, and I take it back to yesterday, and I, I grab lunch, and I, and I head to the dining hall, and I'm ready to eat dinner with some good food from so directly from Sanji, but then the guy says, hey, wait a second, you can't have a cell phone in here.